And not only is this Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year, it also happens to be the last Sunday for our study of Philippians. So let us conclude this study together today by reading Philippians chapter 4, verses 5 through 14. It occurs to me that if we did a greatest hits album for the Apostle Paul, much of chapter 4 would have to be included. It is simply good stuff. So let's read it together, shall we? Philippians 4, verses 5 through 14. Paul says, Let your gentle spirit be known to all people. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing. Do you need to hear that? I do. Let me say it twice. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence in anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. This is the very much needed word of God for us, the people of God, on this Christ the King Sunday. Thanks be to God. And shall we pray? Holy God, I confess to you. And I suspect that there are other folks that would share this confession. I confess to you a bit of COVID fatigue today. I confess to you COVID anxiety today. And I ask, Holy God, that you might speak to us, not just me, but to us, through the preaching of this text today. You are, Paul says, the God of peace. And we Christians should be able to experience that peace no matter our circumstances. Help us to do that today. Help us to do that in the here and now. And help us to do that when the benediction is given in just a very few minutes. Help us to experience you, O oh God of peace, in the week to come. And it is in Jesus' name. It is in the name of Jesus the Christ, the King of all creation, your Son, our Lord, that we pray unto you this day. Amen. I had a light bulb moment last Wednesday in the Walgreens parking lot right here in the Husky. It occurred to me that when I read the Bible, I read the Bible primarily with you in mind. Not a bad way for a preacher to read the Bible, but when I read the Bible, I'm thinking, what from this text can I offer 
to the folks of First Baptist Church of Ahoski that will assist them in strengthening them in living for Christ in the week to come. I also read the Bible because I'm trained to read the Bible this way. I also read the Bible from a historical perspective. That is, I ask myself questions like this, where is Paul, when is Paul writing, what is Paul doing, what was the church like in ancient Philippi? And I hope that this method of reading the Bible, at least most weeks, I know every week isn't as good as the previous week, and I know that we preachers have ups and downs just like tennis players do, but I hope that most weeks, the way that I read the Bible provides you with consistent preaching Sunday in and Sunday out. But it occurred to me in the parking lot of Walgreens, right here in Ahoski, last Wednesday, that I also need to read the Bible not only for your benefit, but also for mine. And it helped me a bit. We heard the Apostle Paul last Sunday from 2 Corinthians 11. Do you remember that the Apostle Paul talked about all of his difficulties since becoming a Christian? Do you remember that he talked about the fact that he had been hungry, that he had been cold, that he had been beaten, that he had been put into prison? That he was in danger from rivers, he says, and bandits and people chasing after him. And then he says, on top of all of this, I'm also under anxiety. I have deep concern for all of the churches. And I identify with Paul there. I don't know exactly what he means. Oh, how I would love to have a 25-minute conversation with my friend, the Apostle Paul. But as a pastor, since I was 25 years old, I identify with Paul's anxiety for the churches. I've experienced anxiety in every congregation that I have been. I have learned through the years that there is a certain loneliness that goes with my position. It took me a while to learn this, but this loneliness is mine and mine alone. I really cannot share it with my family. I really cannot share it with our deacons and our leadership. I really cannot even share it with other staff members. There's a certain loneliness that I experience from time to time as the senior pastor of the congregations that I have served through the years. And FBC Ahoski is no different. However, this COVID situation, it adds another layer to the anxiety that I experience from time to time. And it adds another layer to the loneliness that I experience from time to time. Let me just offer an illustration if I may. Also last Wednesday, last Wednesday was a big day for me. <laughs> last Wednesday I had a conversation, a telephone conversation with a very good friend of mine who also happens to be a deacon in our church. She called me and we were discussing the church and the church during COVID times. And she said to me, she said, well, Trey, how are reservations for worship this Sunday? And I said to her, they are exceptionally low. The numbers are very low, especially as compared to what we've had in previous weeks. And what troubles me is I do not know how to account for the very low numbers for sanctuary worship this Sunday. If I somehow knew exactly why it was, I think that would help, but I don't. Of course, the obvious factor is COVID-19. We had to call in-person services off last Sunday 
because we had some of our folks who were exposed. They are fine now. They are doing great. We've had no sickness as a result of it. But our church has decided to err on the side of caution if we're going to err. So there was no in-person sanctuary worship last Sunday. Maybe that's part of the reason. Um, word on the street is, I've heard this, word on the street is that the pastor of First Baptist Dahosky has COVID, and he does not. <laughs> I had a close call with it, but I am more of a believer than I ever have been in the Mass. I had my mask on, my hairdresser had her mask on, and I did not catch COVID. Even if I did, I would probably be okay, but I spent a good bit of time with my 70 some year old mother, and I don't want to pass it on to her, so I'm very, very careful. So there are rumors on the streets. I understand that. Of course, COVID numbers are up. They are up everywhere. And I venture to say there's not a single person underneath the sound of my voice that doesn't know a person who has had COVID, and we have had several cases of it within our congregation. So no doubt there are concerns about this. And perhaps that is why I'm looking out today at just a handful of people. However, and if that's the case, it's all fine. It's all good. We can deal with that. No problem. Understandable. However, <laughs> here's my concern. I've heard some of you in the debate over whether or not to put children in school, whether or not to have them in classrooms or to do virtual learning. I've heard the concern expressed with your children that one of the hindrances of not having them physically in school is that they might regress. I've had some parents tell me that in fact their children have regressed. Their math skills aren't as they were before. They had an eight-year-old child that has started acting like a five-year-old child again because of the change in our day-to-day -day living. And one mother said to me, both of my children have regressed, and I have too. How can we not regress some during this time? So that's my concern, that's my anxiety, that's my loneliness today. Are the numbers lower because our church is regressing? Are the numbers so low today because I had somebody say to me before the sanctuary was complete, we were sitting up in the balcony having a nice chat, and he said to me, he said, Trey, one of the issues is, the further we go, the longer we go with our normal routine, people may lose interest. And I had never thought about that before. That people could simply be losing interest in the church, and maybe that's what's happening. I sat down this morning. I'm a scholar, you know, so I like evidence. And I wondered, I said, Trey, are you just feeling this way because you're feeling this way? But I sat down this morning, pencil and paper in hand, and I wrote down 10, I can add one more now, 11 conversations that I've had, text exchanges that I've had, emails that I've had, observations that I've made that really caused me to be concerned that our church is regressing. That all the progress that we've made and all the ground that we've covered, we're losing some of that. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the issue is just COVID concerns. But it is my concern on this Christ the King Sunday. I have watched this through the years, and I'd like you to hear me say this, even if it's uncomfortable for you to hear. I have watched this through the years. I've noticed it in my own life. And I have to guard against it in my own life. The human heart can quickly harden towards the church. The human heart can quickly harden towards the church. And before you know it, people are saying, I don't need the church. The church has let me down. I can worship God out in the field or on the boat or what have you. So like this, I've heard this from time to time in my ministry. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't. It's amazing what we Christians can persuade ourselves of. A Christian couple 
has been married for 15 years. And one of the spouses has a sexual affair with someone else. And they persuade themselves that it's okay. Under these circumstances, it's okay. I know about that commandment, and I know what Jesus says, but these are my circumstances, and therefore, the sexual affair that I am having, actually, it's okay. We can persuade ourselves of some of the strangest things. And through the years, I have watched people's hearts harden towards the church, and it can happen rather quickly. So I'm concerned today. Well, it hit me in the parking lot of Walgreens. Trey, what about Sunday's text for you? You're preaching it to this congregation that you love, but what about Sunday's text for you? And it helped just a little bit, <laughs> just a little bit, but it helped. So here are Paul's words in verses 6 and 7. Paul says, to me and to you, he says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And now notice, church, verse 7, in the peace of God, do you have anxiety? Do you have COVID anxiety? Do you need the peace of God to reign in your life? Verse 7. In the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Another friend of mine said to me last week, she said, Trey, we like control. And let's face it, with COVID, there are so many things that are out of our control. And maybe this is what Paul was saying here. He's saying, pray always. We should always pray, not just with heads bowed, but our thoughts and our thinking and our feelings and our emotions should always be dedicated to, to God. From sunrise to sunset, that's all prayer. So we should always pray, but when something is beyond our control, especially pray. When something is beyond our control, pray more. And make supplications and petitions and weave it with this God of peace. What other option do we have? What other option do you have? What other option do I have? I do. I'm, I'm, I'm very cautious. I, I do wear my mask. In fact, last week, I found myself in the company of two people. These are separate incidences. And we were within seven, eight feet of one another, and they had the mask below their chin. And I just ran the risk of being rude. And I said to them, I am trying to keep myself healthy. I've had to quarantine. Anita's had to quarantine. I mean, you know, uh, Anita and I, we're all we got. Maybe you could do better, but we're all you got. <laughs> so, you, you, you need, you need us. And I said to them, I said, I'm, I'm trying to keep myself healthy. Well, would you mind just putting the mask on correctly? And they did. So I'm doing that. I'm maintaining my distance. I'm washing my hands a thousand times in an hour. I'm doing all those things. And, you know, what else can I do? Leave it to God, Paul said. I'm a faithful pastor. I bet you whatever criticisms you have, I bet whatever critiques you have of my leadership over the past three years, I bet you one of them is not small. <laughs> I bet you one of them is not laziness. Because for all of my faults, I am not that. I am faithful. And so everything else you see is beyond my control. Now, look at what Paul says next. He says, in order to experience this God of peace, Paul says, look to my example. 
Check it out, verse 9. He says, These things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Now notice this, church. Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, what does Paul mean by his example? Well, perhaps if you look above and below, we'll see. I'm sure he means his example in general, even though Paul had his faults, even though Paul was feisty, even though Paul could be difficult to get along with, he says, hey, look at my example. Look at verse 8. Whatever is true, he says. Whatever is honorable, he says. Whatever is right and pure and lovely and of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Perhaps, perhaps we need to spend a little bit less time on Facebook. Perhaps we need to unfollow some friends on Facebook. I don't know. But Paul says that we're to think about godly things. We are to put in our mind holy things. We are to fill our souls with Christ-like things and honorable things. And when we do this, you see, it helps us to experience the God of peace. And then notice verses 11 and 12, or pick up in verse 12. Paul says, I know how to get along with humble me. And I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry. Both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through Him, probably Christ, but Christos is not in the earliest manuscripts. Altos is Him. So, but probably Christ. I can do all things through Christ on this Christ the King Sunday who strengthens me. And Paul says that he's learned to be content in whatever circumstance. He's learned to be content when the church is up and functioning on all cylinders. And he's learned to be content when he's going through uh, the valley of the shadow of death. He's learned to be content. And so, if I'm reading Paul correctly, maybe more for me today than I need for you. If I'm reading Paul correctly, we experience this God of peace when we lay our concerns with God. When we fill our minds with holy things and when we learn contentment that comes through our relationship with God through Christ. And so I ask you this morning, as your pastor, those of you that are in the sanctuary, those of you that are joining by Facebook Live, those of you over the radio station, those of you who will tune in later, I ask you, I've shared with you my anxiety, and some of this is uniquely mine. Uh, this experience that I have as pastor is uniquely mine. It goes with the territory. I embrace the cross. I've learned that through the years. Uh, it's mine. But I ask you, what is yours? What is it that you're anxious about? That's really the point of the sermon today. What is it that you're concerned about? What is it? What is the extra layer of anxiety in your own life that COVID has brought to you? Pinpoint it. What is it in your own life that is just beyond your control? There, 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 there are some things that we can control. And then there are some things that we just can't control. And what is it that's beyond your control? <laughs> For me, it is this anxiety that I have over our congregation right now. Do you know, <laughs> can I ask you, do you know, do you know the amount of labor? Do you know the amount of investment that I have put into this place? Some of you in my inner circle, you may know, but I don't think even you know. You have paid me for three and a half years of labor. 
You have paid me for three and a half years of labor, and I've given you five and a half or six. And I would have it no other way. I love it. I like it. I know one speed. I've tried to take my foot off of the gas pedal from time to time, and I just can't operate that way. I've tried to take a day off, and I just don't. It just doesn't function for me. All this investment and all this time about being church-centered, all this talk about our lives centered around the activity of the church, all the progress we had made with people scheduling activities around Sunday morning worship, all the progress that we had made with Wednesday night Bible studies, all the, all the good stuff, and now we may be going backwards. We may be regressing like an eight-year-old child acting like a five-year-old child. I so hope I'm wrong. I so hope it's just COVID concerns. I so hope I'm wrong. But today I'm concerned. Can, can I share with you? It's okay for a time. It's okay for a season. But I don't want to, long term, I don't want to be your living room pastor. Long term, I don't want to be your kitchen pastor. Please, if I'm in your bedroom, get me out. <laughs> Long term, I don't want to be your bedroom pastor. And it's okay for a few more months if I have to live with it. But long term, that's not what I want to do. And I'm just seeing things and hearing things that indicate to me that more and more of our people are getting comfortable with doing church quite differently. And I simply do not like it. I want to look out over this pulpit and I want to see eyeballs. That's what I want. I can't see your eyeballs in your kitchen. I can't see your eyeballs in your living room. I can't see your eyeballs in your bedroom. I can't. If you're high risk, stay there. Goodness gracious, I'm not suggesting otherwise. But some of what I'm seeing in the life of our church just causes me great anxiety. So what about you? What is your point of it? I remind you today from my parking lot experience. I remind you today. And it's helped me a little bit. I'm not saying I'm totally healed. <laughs> but it's helped me a little bit. From my parking lot experience. Reading the Bible this week, not just for you, but also for me. That our God, Paul says, is a God of peace. And we know that is the case. Because our God, Paul says elsewhere, was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So listen to these words again. In light of your anxiety. In light of your concern. Listen to these words again. Paul says, Be anxious for nothing. <laughs> Paul says, I want you to hear these words in light of your anxiety. And I'm going to hear these words in light of my anxiety. Paul says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. Huh. In the peace of God, church, in the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And now verse 9. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. And the God 